I titled my message, What do we do when God's judgment is upon the nations? Now, at this point, the God judge, God's judgment is very severe. Severe in the sense, some nations were defeated by neighboring countries. Uh, some nations were put into exile. Some nations uh, didn't have uh, the voice of God. People were not responding to what God was sharing. So all of that judgment was happening when, uh, around this time. And why God's judgment was happening upon this nation was that they were indulged in adultery, idolatry, and social injustice. You know, these were the top three, the sins of this land. When I say sins of the land, the people were involved in this. Now, Jeremiah is not only the prophet to the Israel and Judah, he was living there, geographical Israel and Judah, but he was a prophet to the nations as well. You know, the nations which were around uh, the nation of Israel. And... Uh, the last time we spoke, we spoke that, you know, if people walk in disobedience, like individual, all of us individuals walk in disobedience, the judgment comes upon the whole of nation. It does not come only on individual, it comes upon across all the nations as well. But the opposite of that is that if people walk in obedience, that individuals walk in obedience, God is able to rescue the whole of nation. The case in point being Sodom and Gomorrah when Lot and his family was there. God first pulled them out of Sodom and Gomorrah and then the judgment of God came upon the, the Sodom and Gomorrah. When God intended to destroy the world by flood, he ensured that Noah and his family were safe and then the judgment of God came. So if we walk in obedience, it's individual, if we walk in obedience, there is a high chance, biblically speaking, that we can allow God's mercy to be showered upon our nation. You know, that's what uh, we have been sharing so far. You know, the second one is the Lord rules over all. You know, there is no one who has advised God. God, there is no one who can summon God. And that's what Jeremiah 49:19 he says, I will appoint over the, her whomever I choose. For who is like me? Who will summon me? What shepherd can stand before me? Verse 38, I will set my throne in Elam, Elam and destroy her of kings and officials, declares the Lord. You know, God is an ultimate authority across all the situations that we see around us. And that's why we keep saying, no matter what is the circumstance, trust God because he has control. The truth is, he is actually in control of every circumstance. He, is, so, he has sovereign control over all of creation. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Psalms 135, he says, God does whatever it pleases him. He does whatever it pleases in heaven, on earth, in the seas, and in the deeps. It means he is able to exercise that kind of absolute control because he is the one who created it. He didn't have to borrow anything. He is the one who spoke and the world came up out to be. And that's the record, what is written in Genesis chapter 1. You know, this aspect of God gives hope to us. Because even if you are in the midst of severe circumstance, you know, even when the odds are against you, even if people persecute you for your faith, you can trust this God. Because God is the Lord over everything. And the Lord is the one who created that that we just saw. You know, you may think, you know, God cannot restore me. You know, there is so much of things which are, the odds are totally against me. And Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I have no other plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. And I think that's the God we are talking about. And that's the God who is infusing his law into our hearts. He's writing those promises into our hearts. And therefore we can be so sure that we are never far from the grace of God. No nation is far from the grace of God and no individual is far from the sovereign grace of God. You now there is a story told of a person called Raul Reis. He comes from a family where his dad was very abusive. So he knew, moved to a new country for employment but the dad continued to be abusive. Now he grew up to be a young man and he did not want to be like his father so he got himself enlisted in the army during the Vietnam War 
And after the war, he returns back to his home country. Now, he still is a young man. He, he got married to a person he liked, and he didn't want to raise his family like his dad. So, uh, but for his surprise, he ended up being exactly like his dad. He was also a very abusive husband. He used to abuse his husband, throw things at home. His wife left him and started living separately because of his abusive behavior. Now, one day, one day while he was at home, he was filled with anger. He threw something he had at the TV in the living room. To his surprise, the TV switched on, and there was a preacher named Chuck Smith who was preaching about the love of Jesus. And he was talking about how God loved us and how he constantly reaching out to us with his love. No, no, this short glimpse of the gospel message, you know, out of the blue, this message from Chuck Smith moved the heart of this young man, Raul. When he heard this message, he was moved by God's love to repentance. And he was willing to follow God to experience the same love which this preacher was speaking to him. Now, after he experienced this kind of love, it's an immediate transformation for him. Even I was watching via the TV, like Percy was saying, somebody was watching, you know, in, in his home. He was, life was, he was filled with the love of God and he realized that he had been living a very uh, abusive life. He goes to his wife's house. She had not gone far from her. She was living down the lane. She knocks on the door to tell her that he is a changed man. I just heard this message and I'm a changed man. And that's what Rawl tells him. Now, the wife didn't want to believe him. <laughs> you know, she said, okay, 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 you go. I'll think about it. And she sends him away. Now, this guy is so excited. He's a new believer. He experienced the love of God. And he's excited about the whole life. And he's thrilled that God has changed his future in a moment. So, one day when he is still sleeping, he sees in a vision of, the, of his school that where he studied. And he was compelled to share this, his story to the school, which is also close to his home. Now, he goes to the school. They know this guy is not a good guy. He's an abusive guy. Uh, but... To his surprise, they gave him permission. Okay, you share with the students. And slowly, the students were touched by the Rawls transformation story. How God's love has touched and transformed him. And there were many people and many young students started to believe in God because of Rawls' story. Now, likewise, he got opportunity to share this transformation story to many other avenues. Presently, Rawls pastors the church in California... And there are five movies inspired by his life. We need to trust God's sovereignty because we are never far from the sovereign grace of God. Because the Lord rules over all. He has sovereign control over every aspect of our life. He knows what needs to come in and what needs to go out. And that is the, in the wisdom and the understanding of God himself. So do we trust in the sovereignty of God because he is the Lord over all.